Good evening and welcome to the City Property Subcommittee meeting of the Fitchburg City Council. I now call this meeting to order. Please be advised that FATV is conducting an audio and video recording of this meeting for public broadcast. I ask that anyone else in the audience who is recording this meeting please identify themselves for the record now by standing, state your name and city of residence. At this time, I ask that all electronic devices be placed into silent mode. We are going to do a roll call of present members, this legislative body. Um, Sally Cragen, Chair, present. Councilor Cruz is here. Paul Boschman here. All right. And I, we have Sam, uh, Councilor Squalia, remotely. Uh, Sam, are you here? Thank you. Yes, I am. All right. The, um, I invite anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to please approach the podium, identify yourself by name and address, and identify the agenda item on which you would like to speak, and then you may speak on it for no more than two minutes. All right, seeing no one further wishing to speak, uh, we will have folks speak on the agenda, uh, which begins with item number 181-23, and I'll read this, it's brief. After receiving surplus needs survey from the city clerk, we are declaring as excess the following property and designate it to the side yard sales program, uh, 12 Park Street. This parcel is in a city tax possession acquired through foreclosure in land court. Because it is owned by the city, it is currently exempt from taxation and the city is responsible for any maintenance. Sale of this property through the side yard sales program will return the property to the tax rolls and shift the maintenance responsibility to the new owner. And I would like to ask uh, Treasurer Cervantes, um, would you like to speak on this property? Yeah, the city uh, did foreclose on it recently, last spring. Um, the parcel um, has become a nuisance for the neighborhood. Uh, there's been dumping there. I believe there's a tree down also. Um, one of the abutters has expressed an interest in acquiring it through the side yard program. Okay, that, that sounds great. Um, any, any questions for the treasurer? All right, seeing none, do I hear a motion to uh, refer this to side yard sales? So moved. I got one question. Okay. My question is, I remember this property yeah. and at one time there was a house on it. And I forget the uh, party that was, it was some kind of housing maintenance company that owned it. In Pittsburgh, I think you remember them very soon. They were working on 50 uh, Allen Place and everything. Uh, <clears throat> my question is, can we put this on hold for a minute? So, uh, on that side yard and bring it back the next time. I went to go up and talk to the neighbors up there. I know the partial had a house on it, but I like to make sure I understand how big, because it is a buildable, I believe it's a buildable lot. Okay, um, this is actually, um, on this motion, this is actually a question for the assessor. So uh, I think what we can do, Councillor Boschman, is um, if we can get a second on the motion, this, once it goes to side yard sales, there's all kinds of preparation that, that happens. And I think if it was a buildable lot, this would have been identified by um, Assessor Paquette and his team. Um, did, did you have any response from them on the uh, need survey? I did not. Okay. I, he did mention to me that he thought it might be buildable. At, at oh, okay. Point. Okay. So, All right. Uh, if, if that is the case, let's move it to side yard so it, it th then gets in our agenda if it is determined not to be buildable. It will, it, if it's determined not to be buildable, it will already be in the right place. So we're saving a step. So if it is buildable, it, it just gets referred back to us. But what, do, what does a month make a difference if it's, we hold it for one month? I think it would prob might be better to just hold it and then find out whether it's buildable or not before yep, we can setting it to the side yard. Um, once okay. it goes to side yard, once it's been designated to the side yard program by the city council, I, I think we kind of have to go forward. We've been directed to do so. We, we have. Mm -hmm. um, then that works for me. Um, can I uh, ask Councillor Cruz to withdraw your motion? I'll withdraw. Okay. Uh, can I hear a motion to hold this item? I have for... a uh, question. Okay. Councillor Squalia, yep, your hand's up. You, so, you may. it looks like that lot is 
about 57, 5,800 square feet. Mm -hmm. And I okay, believe is 5,000 square foot the buildable lot number? Correct. Yep, so that lot appears to be a buildable lot according to the assessor's database. Thank All you. Right. Okay, well, we've had a withdrawal of the motion. Uh, can I hear a motion that we uh, hold this? Um, I make which a motion we, we hold. Well, uh, Councilor Cruz made the motion. We just need a second. A now. second. All right. Uh, all in favor of holding this motion? Aye. 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 All right, motion uh, is held. Thank you very much. I'd like to note that uh, City Solicitor uh, Pusateri has uh, entered our chambers, uh, so we have him to refer to to ask questions should we have them. Moving on to our next property, I see we have our business manager for Fishburg Public Schools, Jeremy Roche, here. And uh, the item as follows is 243-23, to authorize the city to transfer property located at 130 Academy Street, uh, owned by City of Fitchburg's Treasurer's Office, which was conveyed via tax taxing to the Fitchburg School Department. The School Department intends to use this parcel as parking and or open space for Longshow Middle School. Um, Mr. Roche, would you like to approach and... Thank you. You're welcome. I actually have a, a summary that might be helpful. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're excited about the possibility of uh, green space development, really not parking. Um, okay. That hasn't been part of our discussions thus far. Our, our plan is really to develop green space. And, and this document provides a quick overview of where that originated. And ultimately it was um, students coming forward during their civics presentations, which are, are now required in eighth grade. Um, as part of um, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education requirements for students. So in, that, in their presentations from Longshow, the students talked about the fact that they're the only school that does not have green space. Uh, they don't have fields, they don't have access to that type of activity. Um, and it is a middle school, so, so it really is still very much appropriate. So since then, we've been looking around and talking to the assessor's office and talking to uh, the solicitor's office, various folks around the city about the possibilities. So that's where 130 uh, became, you know, became knowledge to us that it was actually um, owned by the city or managed by the city at that point. So our plan would be, if this were approved, is to then pursue, uh, we would do some cleaning of the area, first of all, and then, and then we would pursue the Department of Conservation grants, which are specifically yeah. Uh, greening the Gateway Cities grants. Um, they, we have met with them and spoken with them. We actually walked the space uh, recently uh, to, get a, to give them a sense. And uh, the good news is those greening the Gateway Cities. So Fitchburg is one of the 15 communities that is eligible for these grants. And in addition to that, um, within the city of Fitchburg, the, the zone that is appropriate for these types of grants is, is certainly Academy Street downtown. So I think we would, um, we would be in a great position to be able to pursue and, and then win that one of those grants. So that's the general plan. Uh, again, I think we're eager to, to um, have some potential uh, green space available to the, to the students and the faculty and, and ultimately the community. I think it would be an improvement to the overall uh, area you know, of Academy Street. So that's quickly uh, a nutshell. Uh, the document has a little bit of information about that. I'm certainly glad to answer any questions. Um, excellent, thank you for speaking to us. Sure. Uh, any questions from our members? I got one question. If we decide, this board decides to give you that house at 130, you're going to are you going to tear it down? So the house is actually gone. This picture is uh, from Google Earth. It still shows the home, uh, but that has since been demolished. So it is currently an open lot at this point. Yeah. And you're going to maintain it? Yeah, that's the plan. All the time, we won't have to call you up and say, how about cutting the grass and pulling the weeds? Uh, so, so we love those calls. Uh, we actually got some about the high street uh, parking lot and, and invested $9,000 into cleaning that lot up, and we'll have it paved in the spring as well. Um, 
I, I would say that it would be in our rotation of maintenance by our three uh, folks on the, on the custodial team in Fitchburg Public Schools who would who take care of the grounds for the city schools and Crocker Field. So, yeah, it would absolutely be maintained. And, and, and again, I think what, what was exciting for us was just hearing from the students really looking forward to it. And we wouldn't expect them to maintain it, but we do expect them to be part of the planning for it of what we would do in that space and also part of the, okay, and how will we make sure that this is a place that is, is really owned like from the, from the sort of collective sense of we're doing this and we want you to be a part of the solution moving forward. So I look forward to those conversations. I know the school does, so. But yeah, absolutely, it would be maintained and, and, um, and, and I think there'd be, you know, something that would be really exciting to the school community there. Make a motion, will you say? Um, I'm going to speak. Question. I'm going to speak on the motion, uh, and what I'm going to say is, I actually uh, spoke to students about this very project yeah. back in the spring, and they were eager. They had a really beautiful poster board set up, like explaining what the need was and what the potential project outcome could be. And I'm sure you're going to have that presentation again next spring. Yeah. I w yes, for sure. Yeah, and Civics I, Day. It's it's it was May thirty first this year. I think it'll be around that time in twenty twenty four. That that's great because I had great conversations with students, as did many other members of our government. Um, the, uh, the the pluses to this are it, it's remarkable. Here we are um, six months later, and they had an idea, and we're doing a student idea. So I would like to second that motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Well, Mr. Cruz wants to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 please. No, no, you pretty much answered my question. Oh, okay. Um, all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Looking forward to the next steps there. Uh, we, we are as well. That's great. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, um, our third agenda item. Uh, oh, uh, request... Um, to take items out of order, uh, Mr. Kettle has uh, graciously uh, said that if we like, we can discuss the Elm Street, which I think will go a little more, uh, which, which is not, well, which, which is, um, anyway, can we take 245-23 uh, out of order and do that next? Sure. Is that agreeable? Okay, so um, everyone is good with that. So Liz, if you'd like to come forward and discuss item number 245-23, Community Development and Planning Department, requesting City Council declare following parcel as surplus property, and that is 84 Elm Street. That is the uh, old city courthouse that is um, behind our Monument Park. Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on this tonight, um, Councillor Cregan. I am very um, excited to be uh, here tonight to talk about potentially selling the courthouse and what it could be. Um, so we um, have been working with the state's DCAM um, department. So that's the uh, Department of there's a second M. Yeah, there's a second M. But Depart Department of Cas Capital Assets Management and something. Um, <clears throat> so it's been a little bit slow, but uh, we, we have an agreement with them, um, an oral agreement right now, which we'll be putting into writing, um, that they will retain the ownership of the courthouse while we put the RFP out and while we're collecting proposals, and that they would not sell that property to us until we have a buyer, and basically it will be like a one-day transaction. They sell it to us, we turn around and sell it to the buyer. And we, we did this intentionally, or we asked for this intentionally, because if we don't get a proposal that um, we feel is, is appropriate for the use and the, the space, or we just don't get proposals, um, then we, we don't want to own that property and have to maintain it at, while we wait for maybe the timing to be better or what, what have you. So um, they've agreed that they will, if we don't have um, a proposal that we want to accept, they'll continue to maintain that property and own it. Um, but uh, so uh, ha having said that, we are working with the state. Um, they have an attorney working with them now um, that will be drawing up a land disposition agreement with us. So I, I don't have that yet to come before you. Um, but because this process is somewhat lengthy, 
um, to get to an RFP with them, I wanted to clear this hurdle with the city because this is, can be a lengthy process as well, um, to declare the property surplus at sort of step one. Um, and then we'll continue with the process uh, to um, come to agreement on um, the land disposition agreement and the sale of the property. They've already reviewed our draft RFP. Um, and wow. have accepted that on on, on principle, um, knowing that the the LDA the land disposi disposition agreement will have to be attached to that. Um, I will say one other one other piece that the state will require is um, whoever develops that property will have to preserve the historic nature of the property. So there will those strings will come with the property and that's something that's a little bit out of our control. That That's something the state's gonna require. I'm also not sure if the state is gonna require us to go through a MEPA process. I haven't gotten there yet. Um, so that's an environmental review process that really, it, would, it wouldn't necessarily be us that do it. I think it would be the developer that has to do it. Um, but we still have to work that out. Um, so what I've given you at the table, and I apologize, Council Squalia, you don't have this, um, but I can forward it to you, um, is the, um, the basic criteria that we would be looking at for potential development. So there's a lot of standard language that is in our request for proposals, um, standard language about qualifications and financial readiness, but then there's one section where we're really trying to put what we want in a proposal. Um, so our, um, and th that's structured as highly advantageous, advantageous, least advantageous, or unacceptable. So what we said is that um, the most advantageous proposal would be something that's consumer oriented, cultural, dining, entertainment, visitor lodging, or market rate residential use. So that's sort of our highest yeah. um, wish. And then um, if we don't get that, um, an allowable first floor commercial use um, or market rate or mixed income residential use. Uh, if we don't get that, then um, rehabbing the property entirely, allowing for commercial or uh, residential use, which could be restricted as 100% low income. And then we would find unacceptable any proposal that doesn't um, include full rehab rehabilitation of the property. And every single one of these categories also has as a requirement that it um, preserves the historic nature of the property, that it fits in with the neighborhood and the character of downtown and Monument Square, and that it contributes to the economic revitalization of downtown Fitchburg. All right, any questions from the subcommittee? Councilor Boschman. Can I ask, uh, on this piece of paper you're telling me, mm -hmm. now I'm in favor of A, one, high, two, advantages, three, I'm not too much in favor of it. So if you come back and you say, we got a proposal for 100% residential, and then there's no way I can fight that, right? There'll be no way that they come back, Chair, Madam Chair? This one to so, come back to us. Well, we we get to um, you know we uh, we get to make uh, we are the we are the decision makers on proposals, mm -hmm. and then those are referred to the full council. Should we approve? Should we approve them? I agree. Highly adva advantageous and advantageous is is you know optimal. However, um, uh, Executive Director Murphy, you can could you tell us if again we don't see in the first round. A proposal which meets those first two categories. I'm sorry, I'm not clear what the so question the, um, is. So again, if we don't get exactly what's right for Fitchburg, the the state holds on to the building, and right now, I mean, well, not right now. For the last eight years, we've had enormous amounts of, enor of economic development, and our economic development director. Um, Mary Jo Bohart can confirm that because you're smiling. <laughs> you have seen this. We are in a really, um, we are in an exciting time for Fitchburg in terms of development. And we may well get a highly advantageous or advantageous proposal. 
um, because this is moving quickly. I'm glad that we're having this meeting with such, I, I, I mean, this is the first historic building that we have seen in city property in my, during my tenure. And the first year I was on the school committee, um, first three years, we had three historic school buildings, one a year. And those were not exciting, happy stories the way this is. This seems um, very promising. And um, I think that we're going to have something exciting to look forward to, not good, mm -hmm. correct? Because there has been interest already. Am I, if yes, I'm? Yes, there has been interest. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, may I ask what kind of interest? Would it be premature to, I, I, don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, excuse me, but I, I don't want you to feel put on the spot in any way because I, we, we don't wanna give away anything that is, is that, that we wouldn't, um, we don't wanna make anything public that it is not the right time to make public. Right, and I could speak generally that there, there have been several developers who have expressed interest and, and have asked, when is this gonna come on the market? And, you know, and they uh, come from different backgrounds and development, commercial, versus housing versus uh, art studio space. So those, those have all been kicked around as ideas. Um, but I do hear what you're saying, uh, Councilor Boschman, that 100% um, restricted low-income housing is not the most advent, that, that is not what we're seeking. That's why it's third on the list and not first or second. Yeah, but not, uh, yeah. Madam Chair, I understand what you're saying here but I won't have a say if I vote to you tonight, yes, we call it surplus property. And then it goes out, and you come back, and, and, and all of a sudden, you get one developer that wants to put in 100% lease advantage, 100% now, lease advantage in there. I don't have a say in it. Right now, I don't have a I got a say right now, but we won't have a say after. Uh, we will, I, actually. You will. Huh? Yes. You will. No, we won't. In the past, I've brought these proposals back to, or, or my uh, predecessor has brought these proposals back to um, council for approval of the, um, of the uh, winning bid, or the, the, pro the proposal that we uh, wanted to accept. So that's what happened with um, 491 Main Street most recently. Yep. We brought that back to property committee. And we, we met in the West, uh, West Room. Yeah. Right, I understand that. Yeah. But when you made it, uh, when we did one project up on Top Street and didn't come back, you made the decision for Habitat for Humanity and you set the guidelines for up there. And you did the same thing on Granite so Street. Just, just a real quick point of order. Right now we're discussing the uh, 84 Elm Street Courthouse. So, Madam Chair, let me point out to you what your point of order is. She made a statement that she says she comes back to us in front of us. And I'm telling you, they don't come back to us in front of us all the time. So that's not so. And I'm asking the question, and my question is, if that's going to be 100% low-income housing, I am not going to support it. Not downtown. Not when you get 50% of the market down here, low-income. It's not fair to the merchants or anybody else. I, I actually agree that we don't want 100% low-income housing, but I, I will preface that with saying low-income housing can look and feel differently. Sometimes it's restricted to very low income. Sometimes it might be restricted to 80% of the area median income, which is really moderate, but it's restricted. So it's called low income housing when it's restricted like that. But I can promise you that I will bring the proposal that we would like to accept back to property committee before we actually formally accept that. Now my final question okay. is why yeah, I'm surprised the redevelopment authority is not here. So, so uh, let me speak to that, please. Um, I have been in touch with the executive director of the redevelopment authority. Um, we are in conversation. She has a conflict tonight. She does have the Zoom. She does have the Zoom. Um, I had emailed her, and um, we have uh, we have uh, discussed. But the, again, we're, we're here tonight mm -hmm. to do this business. Yeah, all right. The, the um, none of us can predict the future, but I have loved that building my whole life, and I bet you have too. I do love the building. I think it's a beautiful place. That's why I, I want to make sure that we do it right. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a gateway to downtown, really, if you want to really Absolutely. say it. It it's is. a nice place for, uh, like, the top, the top one or 
even residential, not residential, but marking for uh, businesses and that up there. And <clears throat> be beautiful overlooking that. Absolutely. I'll make a motion. If nobody else got any questions. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Uh, you Cruz. can go with the motion if you'd like to make the motion first. Uh, I'll make a motion that I'll accept this land swap as long as they, the, the redevelopment, not the redevelopment, Liz Murphy comes back and, and to the council and explains what's going to go in there. That's what my motion. So um, let me let me let me just. Um, so we we have this. These are her criteria. We we don't need we know we we don't need to make a motion that includes this because it is included in the package. So I think what the mo I think the motion that you'd like to make is that um, we move to. Um, oh, sorry, I actually had written this down. Okay, uh, motion is that. Uh, we are urging the planning department to work with the state DCAM and take the steps for planning board to issue an RFP. Because what we ask her to do is to put forward the RFP and then we see who responds to it. I have no interest in voting on a least advantageous or unacceptable. Unacceptable is unacceptable, but least advantageous. Um, I have no interest in that. I don't think anyone in this board does, and I sure don't think the city council would. So I, I think we're covered on what, you know, what the concerns are, because this is a golden opportunity to do something extraordinary. And I think that, as you said, developers have expressed interest, and there are a variety of developers who have a lot at stake. They don't want to invest in something they don't think is worth their time and money. Um, would you be all right with um, a motion to, uh, for the planning department to work with the state DCAM and take the steps for planning board to issue an RFP? Can I say one thing? Sure. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the planning board. It would be the community development department. No, you're right. I'm, I'm, I totally misspoke. I, I've got my initials going. All right. The motion would be for the community development uh, department uh, to take the steps to uh, issue an RFP. Would that, would that work? Chair Craig and I believe we're just accepting the request for the city council to declare the following parcel as surplus property, is we not? Oh God, you're you're right. Then that's the, that. It's as simple as that. So I make a motion to accept the planning department's request that the city council declare the following parcel as surplus property, 84 Elm Street. Okay. Anyone on the motion? Second. On, on the motion. Oh, hold on, Sam. Um, just This is an on the motion. Um, so my on the motion, I've already expressed, and I think we've agreed that this is an extraordinary opportunity for Fitchburg. I would also like to remind the viewing public and our friends in the room, that building was an instrumental, it, it, it's a unique piece of Fitchburg history because it was used in a 1958 movie called By Love Possessed with Lana Turner and Ephraim Zimbalist. And you can rent this movie or stream it today, and you can see what Fitchburg looked like in the late 50s. So I, I think that um, this, again, I've never, you know, we don't have another building with that history. And the fact that it is adjacent to the Christ Church on one side and the Armory, you know, 1851 on the other side. You got Paul um, Bolshman because I was born in the 50s. <laughs> all right. And yes, it's as, it's as historic as Councillor Boschman. Um, all right. I have spoken on the motion. Uh, Councillor Squalia, uh, uh, Councillor Cruz, would you like to speak on the motion? Uh, yes. I just, just really quickly, Madam Chair, thank you for that uh, excellent bit of history. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, on the motion, um, uh, although I, I agree with Councillor Boschman that you know we really need to first, I, I just want to say that there's nothing wrong with low income or low income housing for those watching. There's nothing wrong with it, but in this particular circumstance, with the the amount of low income housing we have downtown, it's not as advantageous to our economic development downtown, or it doesn't align with our strategic goals economically for downtown. Um, so I do. I do reiterate the points made by Councillor Boschman that we need to be very strict on this sort of criteria for advantageous and highly advantageous and make sure that we're balancing our goals for housing and community development and economic development. And I, I, I'm confident that Director Murphy will come before us again with the RFP proposal and then we can have our more of a say then and make our determinations then. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. All right. Uh, do I hear a second? I'll second it. Which all right. Call you on the motion. Oh, okay. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 
Motion passes. Uh, Aye. Thank you. Uh, exciting news. Thank you. Our fourth and final item on our, on our agenda, I would like to invite uh, Peter Kettle to come forward and speak on uh, item 244-23. Uh, this is after receiving a surplus need survey from the city clerk, declare as excess the following property and refer them to the chief procurement officer for advertising and long-term lease. One, portions of 567 Crawford Street, uh, more specifically identified in the attached plan entitled non-aviation use. The airport master plan was recently revised and approved by the planning board and the long-term leasing of, of this area is in the best interest of the city of Fitchburg and the Fitchburg Municipal Airport. Um, good evening, Mr. Kettle. Chair Cragen, city councillors, thank you for the opportunity to speak on 244-23. Um, the airport master plan was approved by the FAA and subsequently approved by the planning board. And now we're looking at long-term leasing on basically non-aviation. But to try and update you all on what's happening down at the airport, I think it's important that you know about what has happened recently. So if you'd like to look at, well, we've got no signal at the moment. Oh, because I haven't plugged it in, have I? That makes a difference, doesn't it? Forgive me. We've got both of them now. Okay, so uh, an oversight of the airport. And as I said, I'd like to actually talk about aviation use at the start and then move into non-aviation. Mm -hmm. So um, we have an area of approximately 22 acres, and you saw that little bouncing ball is the new hangar that's being supported and currently in process of being built for the Life Flight Company. Um, which is a tremendous asset to all the cities around here and also into New Hampshire and Vermont and anywhere else in, within the vicinity. We also have a brand new hangar going in between the old Pilots Association and the Nagel hangar. Again, two massive movements uh, towards making the airport even more productive than what it currently is. Now, basically, the 22 acres that is for aviation use. And if you look at the 22 acres, we have the opportunity of putting three very large T hangers, uh, 18 in each, so 54 hangers to go into that one space. And then following that, we have 11 larger hangers that can take twin aircraft. And I'll just show you where they're moving. And then following that, there's another 10 where we can put twin engine jets in. So the future for the airport looks tremendously good. So once we get up to the 10, I'll move forward. So that is the plan for the future. Uh, not in any particular space, but that is the opportunity that we currently have. I don't know if you know or not, but at the moment we have just under 50 corporate jets flying into Fitchburg. We have Chick-fil-A, Collins Foundation, the Clover Group, Coke Industries, McCoy Group, Peterbilt, Schwartz Paper, U-Haul, Ufkus Group, and Utz. And Utz, as you know, is the potato chip manufacturer. So big, big things are happening. So big that this air airplane actually flew into the airport about three weeks ago. And just to show you the size of it, that is me under the wing. <laughs> That's how big that plane is. So we've got massive things happening down at the airport. I'm going to take you back a little bit because, as you all know, we have two hangars, the Quonset hangars, that were built in the early 1900s. And these two hangars were identified basically as coming down and rebuild uh, at a cost of around about one and a half to two million dollars to the city. So using ASMP grants, the city paid nothing, and these are the hangars once they've been repaired. That's one of them. And the other one, just to the right of it, as you can see, is the other one. We have 10 airplanes in those hangars at a cost of around about $160,000, which was an ASMP grant. So moving forwards again, you all know on Crawford Street the trailer park. 
When I took over the job as the airport manager, I didn't see any bills for them. And I later found out that they pay once or twice a year. And the payment for that area was about $2,000. Because it's not a very nice area, it's undulated, it would take a massive amount of effort and financial capital to actually make an improvement on it. But today, after discussions with them, they're now paying $22,000 a year on that property, so up from two to 22,000. Now I have to thank, if it happens, uh, a company called VHB. And I'll get into engineers, scientists, planners, designers, delivering future-focused solutions that shape more substantial, resilient, and equitable communities. Now, I have to thank a young lady that's standing on my right-hand side here, Mary Jo Bohart, for getting a grant from Mass Development. Mass Development gave the airport a grant, or the city a grant, for $100,000, and they employed VHB. And you can see I do like working with PowerPoint. I just draw things all the time. <laughs> so if we look at the opportunity, non-aviation now, this is the important part. Up here, we have about 12.2 acres of land, surplus to our requirements. It's non-aviation. And then down Crawford Street, we have another 4.3 acres of land, again, for non-aviation. So VHB, in consultation with the city and also the airport and the people sitting in the room here, came up with a plan together with, did you see that one bouncing? That is the new opportunity for the new restaurant, approximately 8,000 square feet in that particular area. At the moment, the RVs for the Life Light are actually parked in that space. So as soon as they move out, and as I said, the hangar's being commenced build already, They'll move out in around about March, April, and that area of land will become available for non-aviation, a restaurant down at the airport. Now, moving forwards, that is Crawford Street. You can see the railway line. Within that 22 acres, we have one very large warehouse, non-aviation, but aircraft will be flying through there. What does it give to the city? 241,000 square foot of warehouse, 784,080 square feet of ground area, which results in the payment to the airport an annual revenue of $392,000. What does the city get out of this? The annual property tax will be $1.061 million, and it will bring in 160 new jobs to the city. Or maybe we could change it a little bit. And we could have two smaller warehouses with a hotel. Now, I didn't say anything at the time, being respectful, but I prefer a different view of that with the hotel further to where the first warehouse is, because then you're not going to listen to trucks going past the hotel during the night, 24-hour process. So the airport has the hotel right at the end of where the runway is with the two warehouses this side near Crawford Street. So none of the traffic goes past the hotel. People get a decent night's sleep. It's a beautiful place to sit and watch the aircraft as they come in and go out. What does that one bring us? Well, the annual revenue there is $392,000 for the airport. Annual property tax is $1.195 million with also the possibility of a room tax, mm. as well as 150 brand new jobs. So again, moving in the right direction, let's have a look down Crawford Street. This is down Crawford Street. You know what Crawford Street's like at the moment. Broken down railings, well, the fence has been repaired now, thank goodness, so we haven't had anybody go through it for a while. And that's the potential for Crawford Street. Small businesses along Crawford Street, maybe a small restaurant, maybe a gas station, anything that is required. There's no gas station in the area or anywhere near where the airport is. And it's a very, very high-use road, as you all know. So the conclusions from VHB, based on these findings, the project team recommends that the city and the airport advance efforts to lease, 
for private sector development, ideally a mix of industrial, retail, and hotel, which is what we've shown you. And on the bottom, they made another comment uh, about having solar farm. Now, the solar farm itself, really, we tried that about 10 years ago, and we were offered $300,000 a year for the lease of that land. Unfortunately, the city didn't go for it. It wasn't popular. We tried again, and we got $30,000 for the same 10 years ago today, because all the actual grants towards those have gone down considerably. However, looking at the, the site, the north side, which is the area for the non-aviation, which is the flashing green, as you can see here, mm -hmm. $14.53 million revenue to the city over 10 years, and that's for the item one, which is the 160 new jobs that are actually um, identified. And then the ground lease for the alternative, which is the warehouse, the retail, and the hotel, is $15.8 million. And if we look at the bottom, land sale of 18 acres assumes mix of warehouse, retail, and hotel development. Unfortunately, the FAA have put a big no, 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 no on this. The land must stay with the airport because it is constant revenue, year after year after year. If you sell it, it's a one sale, and you've got nothing left. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're looking at. Now, you all know the city of Fitchburg seal. So what's missing? Yeah, on, this, is a, this is a little question. Yeah, the boulder is missing from that, but... Sorry? Uh, yeah, but... Look, a town in 1764, right? Yes. The great city of Fitchburg, 1764. All right? Now, in between 1764 and 1872, in 1845, the train came yes. to Fitchburg. There it comes, look. <laughs> the train is now here, okay? Now, that was Alva Crocker. Correct. One of the big paper mill companies. Today, we've still got paper mills, we've still got engineering companies, we've still got the train. However, in 1872, it became a city. We became a city. And then in 1929, a gentleman named Wesley Haynes built the airport. Now, the airport, 1929 to today, it's a valuable part of the city, but there's no aircraft on our city seal. Not at all. So I've been telling Councillor Boschman that this is the jewel in the crown. The city is the jewel in the crown. Now watch the jewel. What comes out of that jewel? An aircraft, and that should be on that city seal. So, <laughs> Councillor Craig, uh, sorry, Chairman Cragen, Chairperson Cragen, City Councillors, I would like you to um, move forward with the proposal for the excess land and uh, um, forward it to the Chief Procurement Officer for Advertising and Long Lease, which I believe is absolutely incredible for the city and the airport, because the airport is growing and it will continue to grow. So thank you. I'll take any questions. Um, any, any questions? Ah, Councillor Boschman. You talk about an, a hotel. <clears throat> Why would I want to put a hotel downtown, I mean, down on the airport, when the economic development team are trying to get people down here? Why, why aren't we trying to put a hotel down near Main Street, right, or on Main Street? So you bring the people right into Main Street, and they can come out of the hotel room and go to the stores that they want. We hear so much about the arts up here, and then go to the arts, you get the theater block over here, and everything else is right here. You don't have to worry about them going to Lemonster, down the road, right around the corner. They'll stay right here, and when they leave, they can go down to the airport into their fancy planes and go home. Not fancy planes, just a, <laughs> just a mode of transportation. Now, if we look at the true situation, yes, we can bring people down here. There's taxis, we've got Uber, we've got everything to bring the people down into the city. 50 aircraft are now flying in, corporate jets that want to stay close to the airport. What better than putting it on the airport property? <clears throat> what better? I can honestly tell you what's better. We don't have a lot of land. That's number one. And number two, if we give this away, this level of land, we probably, the city of 
a fishery could probably use it down the road, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> down the road someday. We're not giving it away. No. It's, it's bringing it in, away. you did. It's, it's bringing in $3.4 million over 10 years to the city already. Money that the city can use to build a hotel down in the city here. Exactly. Of course we can. Yeah, I... People are moving out from Boston. They're moving out here. There's people moving here all the time. And, and you know, I think VHB did a tremendous job, and thank you again for bringing them into the city for us. I think they did an amazing job. We just have to capitalize on it and move forward with it, in my opinion. Um, I, I agree. I agree. Um, anything further, Council Boschman? At this time, I'll let the other people talk first. Okay. Um, Councilor Cruz, comments or questions? Yeah. Um, first off, uh, Mr. Kettle, thank you so much for the terrific presentation and for all the awesome work that you do at the airport. As the as the councilor who, uh, representing that ward, it's it's wonderful to see all the, the positive changes happening there, the income, the revenue, and all of these uh, incredible possibilities that are that are on the way. I'm, I'm so in favor of, of whatever will be the most advantageous to the city. Uh, and I trust, uh, I trust your opinion there, as well as uh, Development Director Bohart's. Um, I, I think um, my, my colleague from Ward 2, who I respect, uh, have the utmost respect for, uh, I would encourage him to decide if he wants to invest in the airport or if he wants to invest downtown. But it's got to be, <laughs> we gotta, we got to figure out which one we're going to stick to. Um, sometimes that, uh, the narrative there changes. Um, but, I, but I think this is terrific. I think the airport and the hotel is a wonderful idea. Um, and I think we have so many, and you know, we have uh, on the other side, we have um, Game On, who is it's just begging for a hotel for these events that are there. Uh, it's going to bring in people will stay there. They'll have to go to West Fitchburg to Game On and in between and hit all of the restaurants in between. Uh, when I was working uh, in Lemonster at a restaurant, we would feel, all the way in Lemonster, we would feel when something was happening at Game On. We would get crazy busy and they would be staying at hotels and other places. And we could put them right here in Fitchburg, wherever it is, the airport, whether it's downtown, but you know, we gotta make lemonade, the lemon is downtown, let's squeeze it and let's get everything out of it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, I love the presentation. I, I think that the airport is indeed a jewel. Um, I make a point of attending as the open houses that you have. I am thrilled at the prospect. Um, I am someone whose mother regularly took an airport uh, airplane down to New York after she moved back up here uh, in the 1950s. So the airport is a very important part of uh, both Fitchburg culture and Fitchburg economic development has, has always been part of my, my worldview. The presentation, um, I didn't realize that there were the, the possibilities of the, the warehouse, I didn't realize the scale of it was, was that large and that the, um, I mean, my first vision was I met so many people who live out of town who come to Fitchburg to fly their airplane. And they also fly to places like uh, Portland, Maine, and some of the larger planes now are going to Europe, are going to Great Britain. I talked to pilots who have very large planes who are flying across the country. I, I think, I, to me, it makes all the sense in the world. The people I talked to who, um, no, they couldn't drive to their plane. They, they drove, you know, they want to have some convenience because it's, it's just a different world, people who, who own planes and use them. So um, as, um, I, as you were speaking, as your presentation was concluding, my thought was um, I'd love to see a plane on the city seal. That would be a separate motion um, for another committee. Uh, but the, the inventiveness of this proposal, and I think, you know, you're, you, you run a really, you run a tight shop, and you also run a shop that is global in its scope. And I think we all benefit from that, because who's to say, again, a hotel near Game On, a hotel near, you know, downtown, you know, bed and breakfast, who, who knows? But a hotel, a hotel like that to balance, you know, Great Wolf um, would be a huge, huge compliment. And um, I, I'm really pleased to see this. I'm really pleased to see this. Thank you. 
So uh, we appear to have lost uh, Councillor Squalia, um, uh, who is not uh, here. Nevertheless, she would not be able to vote on this uh, as she has a family member who keeps a plane at the airport. So I think that we're good moving forward. Um, I'd like to hear a motion that we um, declare surplus the 84, um, I'm sorry, that we declare uh, surplus uh, portions of 567 Crawford Street as described. So moved. Okay. Um, a second? No, I'm not going to second it. You're not going to second it. Well, I will second it. All right. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, you are very welcome. I believe that concludes our business apart from approval of the minutes from our previous meeting, which I have put before my colleagues. Um, I emailed these to you after uh, I had kept these minutes. So this does go back to the uh, uh, May 23rd meeting. Um, so you have seen these, these minutes. I did, I did hear that you received them back in May. Um, can, I, uh, can I hear a motion to so accept our minutes? Make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. I'll check it. Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Let me get my script. Uh, all right, that concludes our agenda for this meeting. Uh, the next regular meeting of the city property subcommittee uh, will be scheduled for uh, sometime in the future, possibly in 2024, but it depends on the urgency of requests of all of our departments that we work with. Uh, I would like to uh, request a motion to adjourn. So we'll motion we adjourn. All right, Councillor Boschman, and do I hear a second? Uh, and I think there is unanimous consent. I will take this under unanimous consent. Meeting is adjourned.